Hello learners, welcome back to my channel Sradhas Physics. In this part we will see the population inversion. So in this part we will discuss on the phenomenon of the population inversion and that after we will see how this population inversion it helps in the laser action. So let us start our topic that is population inversion. So when the number of atoms present in the excited state or the higher state it is greater than the number of atoms present in the ground state or the lower state then it is called the population inversion suppose there are two energy levels okay this is suppose e1 energy level and this one is your e2 energy level so suppose if i will say the number of atoms present in the e1 state is suppose n1 and in the energy level e2 so the number of atoms are present suppose this is n2 so basically at the normal condition the maximum number of atoms that is found in the E1 state. So I can say that this N1 the number of atoms present in the ground state this E1 is your ground state the lower energy level state and this E2 is your suppose excited state. So always in the normal condition the maximum number of atoms or you can say the total number of atoms they will be present in the E1 state or the ground state. But when the population inversion is achieved that means when the number of atoms that is n2 is greater than n1 that is the number of atoms present in the e2 state will be more than that of the ground state then this condition is called the population inversion okay let us consider two energy level system let us consider two energy level or two Yes, two energy level system, let me write, two energy level system of energies E1 and E2, energies E1 and E2 having N1 and N2, N1 and N2 be the populations, be the population, population here means populations that is the number of atoms per unit volume the number of atoms per unit volume that is called your populations okay per unit volume so let us consider there are two energy levels e1 and e2 and e1 energy level contains the population n1 and e2 energy level contains the number of atoms per unit volume that is your n2 here i will write respectively okay now according to boltzmann distribution according to boltzmann distribution boltzmann's distribution the population of an energy level the population of an energy level that is E the population of an energy level E at temperature T at some temperature T that is capital T is given by that is according to Boltzmann this is Ni equal to N0 exponential minus Ei divided by kt here this k represents the boltzmann constant okay where n naught where let me write n naught equal to the population of the lower energy level lower energy level or that is your ground state or ground state let me write lower energy level or ground state and this k that represents your Boltzmann constant. Okay. And this Ni represents the population of the excited state or the higher energy level. Since here we are considering there are two energy levels that is E1 and E2. So for this case if I will apply the Boltzmann law. So I can write for energy level E1 and E2 
for energy levels e1 and e2 i can write e1 will sorry n1 will be equal to no exponential minus e1 by kt this is your e1 by kt k is your boltzmann constant and t is the temperature and also we can write n2 that is for the energy level e2 i can write this is your no that is for the ground state exponential minus e2 by kt this is our relation so in this figure you can see just a minute yes you can see here at normal condition that is when n1 is greater than that is at normal condition you can see this is your e1 energy level and this one is your e2 energy level so at the normal condition the number of atoms per unit volume that is n1 this will be larger as compared to the n2 that is the number of atoms per unit volume present in the energy level e2 this is for the normal condition but after the population inversion is achieved so in this case you can see now this is your energy level e1 and this is your e2 energy level so now the number of atoms per unit volume in the e2 state this will be more than that of your n1 so now you can compare between this two that is when n1 is greater than n2 that is your normal state but when this n2 will be greater than n1 so this condition is called the population inversion so let me write this so at ordinary condition conditions ordinary conditions means n1 is greater than n2 okay n1 is greater than n2 that is the population in the that is population in the ground or the lowest state is always greater than it is always greater than the population population in the excited state in the excited or the higher state higher states okay but when the population population of the higher state of the higher state is greater than higher state is greater than the lower state lower state that is the ground state then it is called population inversion is achieved then it is called population inversion simply population inversion okay so inversion this word means just the reverse action that is in this diagram you can see when the number of atoms per unit volume it is more in the excited state that is e2 then that of the ground state that is n1 then this is called the population inversion now we will discuss on the three energy level system so let us consider a three energy level let us consider a, a three energy level system with energies with energies the energies are suppose e1 e2 and e3 of populations of populations n1 n2 and n3 n1 n2 and n3 so at normal condition at normal condition normal condition that is normal condition 
the energy level that is e1 is less than e2 and that is it is less than e3 e3 is the excited state and similarly i can write the number of atoms per unit volume that is n1 will be less than n2 and this will be less than n3 because at the normal condition the maximum number of particles will be available in the e1 state that is the ground state since the next level it lies just above the ground state so you can say that the number of particles present here this will be less as compared to this n1 and similarly for the excited state e3 so here the number of particles that is n3 the number of atoms per unit volume that is n3 this will be very very less than or it, it may be negligible as compared to this n1 or this is as compared to this e1 energy level that is i may write here in the ground state that means at the normal condition here i am saying at the normal condition in the ground state e1 the lifetime the lifetime of atom is more and the lifetime of excited state the lifetime of atom in the excited state excited state that is e3 excited state e3 is 10 power minus 8 second that is the atom will remain therefore 10 power minus 8 second but in the intermediate state but in the intermediate state that is e2 e2 is the intermediate state e2 the atom has the atom has lifetime 10 power minus 3 second so it means that obviously this intermediate state has more lifetime than that of the excited state since 10 power minus 3 it is larger than that of your 10 power minus 8 so i can say that the intermediate state it has the value or it has the lifetime more than that of the excited state it means that the atom will remain in the metastable state or the intermediate state this intermediate state is called the metastable state for the maximum time than as compared to the excited state so let me write it here so it is called so it is called metastable state okay since it is a intermediate state and it is the most stable one that uh, that of your excited state so i here i can write so it is called metastable state okay but when a suitable amount of energy it is supplied to this system then atom get excited so it will reach to this state that is your excited state and after their lifetime the atoms will transit to this state n2 that is your metastable state since in the excited state the lifetime is 10 power minus 8 second and in the metastable state it is 10 power minus 3 second the atom will stay here for more time than that of your excited state so due to this accumulation of the atoms in this state so here you can say that this n2 will be greater than n1 that is your if you will see if you will compare between only these two states so this one is your now excited state and this is your the lowest state and your ground state so now this n2 will be greater than n1 that is your higher excited the in the higher excited state or the metastable state at the higher state the number of atoms present will be more than that of your the ground state so here we can say that the population will be achieved so let me write it here when a suitable energy when a suitable amount of energy energy is supplied to the system is supplied to the system system 
atoms get excited atoms get excited into e3 that is e3 energy level e3 energy state i can write e3 energy state after their lifetime after their lifetime after their lifetime that is when their lifetime at the e3 state is complete then the atoms are transit the atoms are transit transit to e2 state e2 state so due to more lifetime due to more lifetime of an atom more lifetime of an atom in the state in e2 state the atom stay for the atoms stay for the atom stay for longer time for longer time in e2 state in e2 state then or as compared to as compared to e3 state as compared to e3 state okay so due to this accumulation of atoms due to the accumulation of atoms accumulation of atoms in e2 atoms in e2 the population is established the population population is established established in between in between e2 and e1 states e2 and e1 states okay so this is how the population inversion is established in case of the free energy level system since in the metastable state the lifetime of the atom is more than that of your excited state so the atom will stay for the longer time in the metastable state and also e1 is the ground state so e2 will be now the higher state so that the n2 will be greater than n1 and here also we can say that the population will be achieved so this is all for today so in the next class we will see how this will help in laser action thank you all